very emotional video. I don't know if I should be sharing this online for the people to like see it and judge me. But my channel is all about empowerment and share my journey and help people to feel less alone. Um, and I really like authenticity. So yeah, here we go. <sighs> On December 30th uh, last year, I posted a video about my New Year's resolutions. And of course, they were all about like new year, new me. I declare that I'm gonna lose 66 pounds and so far I lost one and it's been almost two months. I've been trying so hard and I feel like I've disappointed myself and I've disappointed you because I feel like you've been rooting for me. And I don't know, I just I just feel a bit embarrassed. So I I'm gonna share this story with you of what happened and like what led me to this place. This video is a bit different. I write a bit of a script so I know where I'm going and I don't know, it just looks like more aesthetically pleasing but like this is just, I feel like it's just like one-on-one -on -one between you and me. Um, and I wanna be as much authentic and like share my story with you. <laughs> I don't know, it's very, <laughs> it makes me feel very emotional but also like scared and awkward. <sighs> so yeah, this year started a bit rough. Um, so basically everyone from our New Year's Eve party got infected and they had like they were in quarantine and they had to be in self-isolation. I was stuck at home for 10 days. The plan for this year was like go to the gym and exercise and go for little walks and just like, you know, change my life, becoming that girl and then ugh, I had to be at home and I couldn't do all those things and I was like very emotional. Um, and of course the diet was not going well because I was just eating my emotions as you do. And then it got a little bit better. Me and my flatmate Valentina, we decided to start going to the gym in the morning. So we, it's been a month now. I'm very proud of myself. So we wake up around like 6.30 and we go for a class at seven. So we did three times a week. And honestly, like the first week was so tough. I was so tired and angry and hungry. Oh my god, but then it got so much easier. Yeah, it's been a month now and like from next week I'm going to add the additional days. So now I'm gonna go four times a week um, Baby steps, but I feel so much better and I have so much energy like I always thought that people are lying But on the days that I don't go to the gym, I feel tired <laughs> um, But I don't want to push myself still um, but yeah accountability works and if it wasn't for me Valentina would wake up and if it wasn't for her I wouldn't go I would just go back to sleep so it works perfectly and yay us but also this time was very very stressful for me and I'm dealing with a lot of like issues at the moment and unfortunately because I suffer from eating disorder I deal with those emotions in a very unhealthy way and I've been doing so well like I know what to eat I, I, I've always I've always liked healthy food and to be honest I eat very balanced diet my whole life um, I eat a lot of vegetables a lot of fruit and stuff like that so I would be like eat very very healthy uh, the whole week and then something happens and I would binge and I would just basically erase all the effort that I've done <sighs> that's hard that makes me like hate myself for that because I put so much effort and I'm doing so well and, and then <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to therapy um, mostly specifically for this and I'm, I'm doing so much and still it's so hard. It is so fucking hard. We talk a lot about all the other eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia, but I feel like we don't talk enough about binge eating. It's so fucking self-destructive. It's kind of basically like bulimia when you have like those episodes when you just eat whatever i don't know if everyone is the same but um with me it's like when i feel very unhappy like something happens i will mindlessly eat a lot of food but like it doesn't really matter what it is i would just go to the shop and buy, buy a lot a lot and i'll eat it like so fast that I, I don't even like really taste it i don't know and i would like eat so fast and to the point that it physically hurts me and then i'm satisfied but then the guilt comes um it's something that like you cannot stop. I feel like I'm not inside of my body when it happens. It's very, very bizarre. I feel like I have no control over it. Like it's just one thing on my mind to to like eat it and that will make me feel better. But it doesn't. Because the moment you feel satisfied, the moment all those like emotions like gets away from you, then you you feel such guilt. And <laughs> then I like 
I usually cry and I say that I hate myself and it's like, why am I like that? Whoa. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm sharing this with you. There were moments that I had to actually stop myself, I, like by pouring dish soap on my food, because sometimes throwing into the bin doesn't help. There was this episode of Sex and the City. Miranda, I think she baked like brownies or something, and she was just like eating one by one, and then she threw into the trash, and then she took it out of the trash and started eating again, and then she like poured the dish soap on it, um, so she would eat it out of the trash. It happens more than you think. We're trash people. No, sorry, no. I'm kind of like becoming a slave of food, which is so sad. It sounds so pathetic, but I've never learned I have a good relationship with food. Food is always like a mean to something, to like stimulate my mood, to make me feel better. Or even when I celebrate, I celebrate with food. It is very, very harmful. And if it wasn't for this, I would be like freaking skinny because I eat quite well. I like to exercise. I tell you my story, okay? how it started because when I was a child I was actually very very thin when I was like eight or nine I ended up in a hospital that was like very bizarre and I think it's a very scary moment for my parents like I almost died I choked during the sleep and all they could hear was like oh! and then I was like apparently you're all like gray and I I didn't breathe and I I clenched my jaw anyways they managed to like open my jaw and it was fine but they like I ended up in a hospital I was so thin but also I had such an appetite that the doctors thought that my parents are actually starving me of course they were not but for a moment they I think my parents had like a conversation with social services or something like that um and they saw my brother my brother was like the opposite of me he was always kept it on like the chubbier side and then the doctors were like oh bizarre the same parents and like totally different bodies Types. anyways like I was very very thin um, and then that was like that until like my early teens uh, but then I started to hear a lot of harmful comments like oh don't eat that because you're gonna be fat uh, you have to like watch your weight and stuff like that and I was still very very thin but like because of the fat phobia and like what our society is I was I had this like thing in my head oh don't eat because you're gonna be fat and fat is like the worst thing that can ever happen to you there was this moment that I will never forget until like the end of my freaking life I was size like I don't know US maybe two four and I was trying on this top and my my parents friend came up to me and she started laughing and like she um, squeezed my muffin top like I was size four I didn't have a muffin top and she like squeezed my body there and she was like oh don't worry if there's ever gonna be a flood you're not gonna die because you have swimming wheel like what why the Ugh! this comment touched me so deeply like before that i knew that like i'm not fat but then it made me feel very self-conscious and then i started to get like obsessed with my own image and i remember um i think it was like 14 i went on this like all apple diet like for a few days you're supposed to only eat apples like what the fuck I, I don't even know if my parents knew or they like allow me to do it but i was the stupidest thing ever and then like my brother was always on like the chubbier side and he was on actual like diet prescribed by a dietitian and at the time I thought that I was fat and I asked my mom if uh, I can go on a diet with him as well and I know my like my I love my parents and they really wanted the best for me but I think she should have said no but because like her head was only like brainwashed with all the diet culture she was like okay yeah that's fine and I think I was on it for like two weeks and I felt and I felt so restricted after immediately I was craving fucking everything and I think that was the like ignition point I hated myself and also I was so hungry and I felt so restricted that I started to binge there was also another factor that there was someone around me that didn't treat me very well um, it was not my parents but like I don't want to get into details um, this was not a good person and so this person really liked my brother but didn't like me and they made me feel that they don't like me when I first started to be around them I was like seven years old and I didn't understand this I, because of that I kind of grew up feeling less than like I don't matter and I'm worse I, 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 I don't know and and then I discovered food as a coping mechanism and I remember I would go from school and I would go to a shop and like bought some cookies and stuff and I would just like hide in my room and eat it in like complete silence so no one can hear me and then I will just go for a walk like dispose the evidence so they don't see the wrapping and all the stuff in the garbage so up until like high school I like maintained so like normal weight I remember I was like 60 something kilos which is like 120 something pounds but then when I moved out and I started living by myself and I started having my money then 
all went down the drain and I started getting a lot of weight because no one was controlling me and I was so stressed. I was at university and I was just constantly binging because I missed home and I was in a new city and I was stressed and that I had access to my own money and I was in charge to making my own food so sometimes I would just end up eating like a huge bag of frozen fries instead of a dinner and then I think I gained the most when I moved to US because sorry but you guys have the worst food I mean it's delicious but the standards is it the corn syrup I don't know what it is it just basically ballooned up when you go there and I was also eating a lot because there was a lot I don't know everything was so much more accessible and cheaper and so many of new things to try but also you know like being au pair is not easy and i had a lot of traumas that happened there to me and i was of course coping with food when i came back i managed to lose um i think like 13 or 14 kilos but i gained it all back within like half a year because of course something bad happened to me and food was always there for me you know um i know some people when they're stressed they don't eat and that's where i binge because food is my safe place but also is my killer for a few years i've maintained i think kind of the same weight and last year i've gained 10 kilos on top of that just like 20 pounds it was quite a hard year for me i think i like i was in self-isolation like almost two months out of 10 um and a lot of things happened i don't know overall it was not the best year and i looked into food for comfort a lot i am really 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 trying um i'm reading all the books I'm doing my therapy and it sometimes helps. I think I need to do more. I think I need actually need to try because like I know all the things that I should be doing, but then it's one thing to know what you should be doing and then the other thing to actually do it. Like there's so many techniques. The easiest one would be when you feel like you want to binge, you just say, oh, I'm going to binge in like 15 minutes. And then each time the like the 15 minutes um, comes, you'll be like, oh, just wait another 15. And then like maybe the urge is gonna go away. But I don't think I've ever been successful. I just always like give up because I want like this instant gratification, like instantly feel better. But it doesn't actually make you feel better. It's just temporary and then you feel even worse. I, I know that a lot of people gonna judge me for it. Um, I made such a big deal about losing weight this year. I still wanna do it. I still gonna pursue it. I found accountability partner for the weight loss and she's starting in like a week and I'm gonna join her and we're gonna like support each other because that really works like I see that with Jim but like my flatmate doesn't really need to lose weight at all so I can only like use her as uh, as accountability partner for Jim honestly I've never done that in my life like being so consistent with going to gym so I hope my other friend she's gonna help with the weight loss as well I'm gonna try all the techniques that I've learned you know I'm a big fan of uh, meditation so i'm gonna find some like guided meditation to help me with binge eating um i'm sure there's some like there's guided meditation for everything so i'm gonna try that and i'm gonna update you on how it went so keep your fingers crossed for me and if you're dealing with the same problems don't feel ashamed okay you're not alone you can reach out to me you can reach out to me and i know how it is I know how it is to struggle with it. I know how it is to feel like you don't have free will. It's terrible. And I see the people, I see their faces and they think I'm fat because I'm lazy and I eat too much. But it's not the truth. I'm not lazy. I eat healthy. I eat vegetables. I eat fruit. I go for walks. I go to the gym. I don't sit on my ass all the time. It's just this thing that always hangs above my head. No. <laughs> I'm fucking crying on YouTube <laughs> Yeah, we're all so quick to judge Like you look at someone my size or bigger And you're like, oh, they're so lazy They don't do anything, you know They just like, just eat less and go to the gym I might be wrong, but I don't think anyone who is overweight Is because they're lazy It's because they, they like, just like to eat chocolate I think all it comes down to are like mental issues and bad relationship with food so have some compassion because you never know what that person is going through or has gone through in the past so if you take any way for anything from this video it'd be this and i hope i can beat this monster <laughs> so i feel like this is like a monster living inside of me and like i lose my free will i don't know it's so weird it's like someone's taking over my body it's like i'm being possessed so if you're struggling with this don't feel alone you can always reach out to me you can dm me on instagram and we can go through this together and 
I really hope I can make a difference this year. Whatever works for you, it works. Like, I love the saying, if it's stupid and works, it's not stupid. So like, the one thing that they always tell you about eating disorder is not to go on a diet because like, if you restrict, blah, blah, blah. And like for me, like counting calories and being an actual like deficit, it makes me feel like I'm in control of this binging. I don't restrict myself when I'm on a diet, I eat pretty much everything I want just in moderation. So I don't feel the urge to binge because I restrict myself. I feel urge to binge because of my emotions and because I have this as a coping mechanism. And when I try to eat intuitively and when I'm not on a diet, then like pfft, I eat, like that's how I gained weight last year, basically. Uh, so it works for me, but not, it might not work for everyone else because I think study says that it's not a good idea But like I've discussed this with my therapist and she said if it works for me then it works for me and like she, It's fine. So I'm gonna be on a diet. I'm gonna do this I hope that's gonna work and I really hope that this video made you feel less alone because it was very hard to film And it's very very hard to share because a lot of my friends are watching this But also if you're gonna think less of me because of that like fuck you <laughs> We're all dealing with our problems, right? Everyone has something. Okay, I think I feel a bit better. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is not, not like my usual content when I'm like all cheery and funny and happy and like sharing all the tips with you, but like here I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Watch my journey with me. So be there for me and I'll be there for you. Thank you so much for watching.